Good morning. You are welcome to your number one program here on Echo Television International. It is the dailies and I am Rachel Tanzi. Today on the show, we will be doing the newspaper review alongside with Lois Turaki. Lois, good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you for having me. I'm excited to be here, you know. And there's a lot happening in the news. I can't wait to unpack all of that with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. And we would love to hear your opinion and your views as the stories unfold because there's so much happening on the papers today and the first story we'll be looking at will be on leadership the friday edition the big story is 1.5 billion dollar diary import tenable begins livestock reform rallies governor's support the writer says federal government eyes revenue from 821 million cattle sheep goats chicken pigs we will invest and support reforms this is is an assurance from Abdul Razak. You can find all the details on page four. Nigeria 12 others join BRICS as partner countries. Former NEC chairman Humphrey Wosu dies at 83. Government owned arms in terrorist hands stolen. This is a report from the defense headquarters alongside the probe consigning most of the illicit arms gotten from the government through uh, our security personnel. We have a trend federal government stops export of cooking gas numbers. Nigeria, US enjoy 110 billion dollar annual trade relationship a report coming from the envoy you can find both threats and numbers on page two still on the paper cost of governance ministerial convoy cut to three vehicles eight feared dead in reverse helicopter crash and we have settled beggars northern democrats tell federal government and governors and that's all the news on leadership newspaper on the Vanguard newspaper, from the top, we have federal government to raise VAT on luxury goods to 15%. All eight passengers in Boney helicopter disaster feared dead, according to police. And you, can, you can find more details on page six of the Vanguard newspaper. Federal government sets up 46-man committee to review obsolete laws. Catholic Church condemns federal government's alleged move to legalize abortion. If you're interested, you can find more details on page 8. We have a picture story of Glow My G for Youth. And um, from the left, we can see Global Comms Director of Creativity, Chuka, Chuka Obi, and music star Nas Boy. Third on the left, we have Ninja Garchi. We have uh, student union officials from University of Lagos, Unilag, Lagos State University, Lasso, and Yaba College of Technology at the unveiling of Globalcom experiential MyG activations to getting youth across the country in Lagos. And this event took place yesterday. And on the big story here, we have governance costs, Tinibu orders cuts in ministers' convoys and aids. And the writer says, orders military paramilitary agencies to reduce vehicles, personnel deployment. How Nigerians' feedback shaped Tinubu's cabinet reshuffle. This is coming from the presidency. Ministers assessed based on performance. Matawale retained because allegations linking to him to banditry are untrue. Why Baja, Olubumi, Ojo, Edun, others were retained. This is coming from the source. They gave reasons why they were retained. And retaining Kiamo reflects Tinibu's commitment to aviation growth. This is coming from AON. As Tinibu seeks Senate's confirmation of ministerial nominees. If you are interested in more of the story, you can find it on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. On the top down of the newspaper, we have reps. Central Bank of Nigeria disagree over validity of old narrow notes. It says commence withdrawal of old narrow notes before December 31st deadline. Reps tell the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, there's no such deadline. CBN replies to reps. Well, you can find more details on page 8. Tinibu laments as Nigeria spends 1.5 billion US dollars on dairy imports. National grid has collapsed 162 times in 11 years. This is coming from the Jankos and uh, as, as we know, we're still experiencing the darkness and we are hoping that soon this is five days on and then 
we are hoping that probably today uh, it will be fixed and then we'll have light because there's this total darkness it's not just a uh, funny it's not. you know it, it has affected uh, businesses especially small scale businesses or you know the people that want to use oil, um, oil electricity rather to do some of their jobs and all of that now they can't do because fuel is even on the right high side and then all of that mm -hmm. so we're just hoping that this thing will be fixed as soon as possible because it's becoming unbecoming it is yeah. yes and uh, still on the paper ex next chairman humphrey wosu 83 dies in the united states that's a sad one may he so rest in peace on sports we have calf award lukman Toast aircon nominated or cement boniface miss out. And that's all the news stories you can find on the Vanguard newspaper. On the Matrix newspaper, Nigeria, 12 other nations join BRICS as partner countries. You can continue with this story on page 3. Luke Mantra's aircon named among 2024 CAF Player of the Year nominees. Potakot helicopter crash at least three dead. NNPCL engaged helicopter NSIB provides update. President Tinibu issues new directives on reduction in cost of governance. You can find details on page three. High Court adjourns Yahaya Bello's <coughs> alignment in EFCC case to November 14. The big story on the paper, old narrow note, CBN reps disagree. No deadline on circulation of all 200 Naira notes, 500 Naira notes, and 1,000 Naira notes, says the Central Bank of Nigeria. Says all bank notes will continue to remain legal tender indefinitely. Reps contradict Supreme Court, ask CBN to face out old Naira notes by December. Now, it must not be December, lawyers, but I believe that there is. it's important for the old Naira notes to face out. Mm -hmm. um, if December, it will cause a cash crunch because we are looking at barely uh, two months and some few weeks to the end of um, this year, mm -hmm. 2000. And 24. However, it, it will cause another cash crunch. But I believe that if we can start working from now till the ending of 2025 for the old narrow notes to face out, there won't be cash crunch, there won't be scarcity of narrow, there won't be all of the chaos we experienced mm. in the past concerning the new narrow notes and the old narrow notes saga. But I don't think this new notes should coexist together. Mm. It, it doesn't make sense. There was a reason behind the mm. creation no. of the, or the redesigning mm. of these notes. And even if the implementation at first was was wrong the reason behind it was concrete and we need it because we need to reduce the circulation of our currency out there whether we like it or not the abundance of the naira notes out there out of the coffers of the banks and the central bank of nigeria is also contributing a large percentage to the weakening of our currency as against the dollar so if there was a failure in the past implementation mm. i think a better implementation and it's just by the time frame of taking back these old notes. But I don't think they should remain legal tenders indefinitely. It is not done. We cannot have one currency. We cannot have a denomination rather having two faces. It is it, not acceptable. It's not done that way. And I just hope that the central bank, rather than indefinitely, will sit down and fix a time that is achievable to be able to stop some of the chaos we encountered in, in the previous CBN administration under yeah. MFLA. Mm. Yes. It's, it's really important what you just noted. And... Uh, I, I was expecting by now mm -hmm. the old Nera notes should be out by now, like yes. they shouldn't be coexisting mm -hmm. together. But then they know better yeah. uh, since they did the, the whole redesign and, and all, all those policies. But then, if you ha you rightly said the implementation might have been wrong in the beginning, but then by now we expect that there's a new CBN governor yes. and there are new. Uh, um, policy makers yeah. there are more reforms that need to be implemented so hopefully but i, I see a cash crunch coming <laughs> yes if, if it's not done i see properly. it coming if it's not done properly actually yes. but then um looking at uh, these things with them coexisting all this while 
by now we should have less of it we should we should but mm -hmm. when you go out there you still more see of more the of the old currency that's true. but then they have a lot to do and yeah. they should uh put us into contribution <laughs> they, they, they have to yes. yes still on the matrix newspaper tenable submits list of seven ministerial nominees to senate for confirmation files response to defamatory allegations by social media personality very dark man after eight months in detention binance executive director leaves nigeria we have uh, uh, an entertainment story cardi b hospitalized cancels headlining performance at At atlanta's one music fest you can find details on page 21 and we have a picture um the caption is deepening investment opportunities where we can see wale do minister of finance and coordinating minister of economy and african bank president benedict orama on the sidelines of the imf annual meeting in washington dc this happened yesterday and that's all the news on the matrix newspaper now the the guardian newspaper from the top we have calls for military intervention misery hardship policies driving nigerians to desperate choices and there's a picture story there showing hardship and unhappy nigerians and the military and if you're interested in the story you can find it on page four and five of the guardian newspaper federal government begins reforms of obsolete laws nigeria records 83 polio virus type 2 cases you can find more details on page seven Tinibu orders cost cutting measures as Senate begins screening on Tuesday. Helicopter crash in SIB begins probe as search continues for missing passengers. On judicial matters, court peaks November 14th, 20th, to hear from Yahya Bello. If you're interested in the story, you can find it on page 29 of the Guardian newspaper. U.S. grateful as alien violence chief depart nigeria after eight months lagos ogun urged residents to low-lying areas to relocate over water release from oya dan it's very important to avoid loss of lives and probably properties might be lost but then the lives are more important if you are alive you will definitely acquire more property so uh we are encouraging them as well to leave the low-lying areas because we have seen over the years what floods have done to yeah. people and it doesn't it, it's not friendly they mm -hmm. say water is important but till you fall inside yeah. ocean <laughs> so you know that it is really deadly so um we're encouraging people that are living in riverine areas and low-lying areas to leave evacuate for their own safety yeah. And then still back on the paper, we have no deadline on all narrow notes, says CBN, as reps pushes for new ones. The last story here says troops arrest IPOP founder, commander, kill 140 terrorists. If you're interested in this news or any of this news story, you can find them on the Guardian newspaper. On Blueprint newspaper, Tinubu limits on ministers' convoy to three vehicles, five security personnel. On business, federal government making efforts to de-dollarize Nigeria's economy, a statement from Edun. Lukman Ekong made 2024 CAF award list. Ahead Senate screening, Nigerians set agenda for new ministers, one cost of living reduced. The writer says APC women leader tax in man on gender-based violence. GDO Joe identifies gender gap, says youth PLWDs deserves mention. Mixed reactions greet you rather choice for humanitarian affairs. You can start with the details on the front page. Our staff on board crash Potakot helicopter, a report from NNPC. Troops smoke out 140 terrorists, arrest 135 NAP2 IPOP leaders, bring bandit King Big Pelo Turji alive. This is a statement from Badaru, and I just hope that um, um, we this this is an achievement um, for uh, the NSA and also for our defense headquarters and all of that because now if you are able to get these 140 terrorists, NAP2 IPOP leaders, and then we are still seeing 
Queen Badori saying, bring bandit King, Kingpin Bello Tuji alive. He means he's either still out there uh, on the run and then he's not yet captured, meaning mm -hmm. um, that we have IPOP leaders arrested, but then when it comes to the terrorists, we are still yet to find um, the, the current Boko Haram um, <laughs> and leader and all of that. So, but this is, this is still an achievement when it comes to security in the country. We need to see more of these out there. And I just hope that eventually one day um, we will have Bello Turji in custody and then eventually he will face the law. Mm. Still on the paper, Nigerians face acute hunger as prices of rice and beans soar. Ododo drills boreholes at IDP camps provides relief. 2019 was best base year for our GDP a report from the National Bureau of Statistics. And that's all the news on Blueprint newspaper. First newspaper. The big story here says disturbing fact. National grid crashes 162 times in just 11 years. And the writer says NERC holds public hearing to address persistent nationwide blackouts. From the top, we have reps urging CBN to begin withdrawal of old Naira notes. On sports, Lukman Trust Ekong should list that for 2024 CAF Player of the Year. Helicopter carrying NNPCL officials crashes and rivers, three bodies recovered. Gets me Turji Defense Minister orders troops to capture notorious bandit leader. Mothers use AI company after son suicide linked to chatbot love affair. That's sad. Cost caught in drive to Nibu imposes convoy restrictions, limits ministers to three vehicles. Binance executive released after eight months in Nigeria detention. Simon Ekwa Okunja Iwela denies role in 57.5 billion US dollars. Biafra alone and that's all the news stories you can find on First News newspaper. On the Daily Times newspaper, the first story, a Papio's impeachment rumor. Federal government files six count charge against nine for spreading false information. June 12, 1993, presidential poll umpire Humphrey Wosu dies at 84. No deadline on circulation of Naira notes, says the Central Bank of Nigeria. Troops arrest IPOP terrorist leader, commander, neutralize 140 others across Nigeria. The big story on the paper, senators plead over funding for zonal development commissions as lawmakers reject immunity for commission's chief executives. Tenebu issues new directive on reduction in cost of governance. The writer says ministers, heads of MDAs restricted to maximum of three vehicles in official convoys, affected appointees to have at most five security personnel attached to them. Why 37 LCDAs can't have same status as old LGAs? This is the Lagos Assembly saying, we have an accident scene on Okobo Bridge, Ibadan, or your state. Um, and that's all the news on the Daily Times newspaper. Coming to New Telegraph newspaper, from the top we have Central Bank of Nigeria. Monthly diaspora inflows rise to 600 million US dollars as foreign reserves hit 40 Point two billion US dollars says excess banking system liquidity hampering inflation fight. AFC invests thirteen point two billion US dollars to boost infrastructure in Nigeria. Others you can find more details on page seven. Enugu workers will earn eighty thousand naira minimum wage from October, says Mba. This is a good one because uh, looking at the whole hardship situation we are facing. It's quite thoughtful of the government to come up with this uh, with this policy, and I hope they uh, do it and pay the workers that particular amount that is being stated. That's even above the it is above the minimum, the, wage, the minimum yes. wage. So it's uh, it's a good one. I give it kudos is, to yes. uh, Governor Mba for that. And uh, still on the newspaper, we have Bianca Ojuku's ministerial appointment downplays party loyalty. This is coming from Anambra APC. You can find more details on page three. Commonwealth leaders to defy UK on slavery reparations. You can find more details on page four. ex neck chair Professor Humphrey was who dies in U.S. hospital. And the big story here says no deadline on circulation of old Naira notes, says Central Bank of Nigeria. 
still on the newspaper that's the new telegraph we have lawmakers demand money from varsities during oversight functions this is coming from dawn ohani they say his fresh crisis brews over you what he won yahoo successor customs launches new mgt system to boost trade efficiency and on climate crisis we have flood ododo provides relief materials drills boreholes at idp comes you can find more details if you're interested on page 29 cost of governance to enable orders caught in ministers others convoy security personnel and on the sad note it die as helicopter plunges into atlantic ocean federal government launches pro you can find more details on page four six and seven three bodies were recovered at press time and um, we hope that the remaining bodies will be found so that uh, proper burial will be given to them and then depression restlessness others can be triggered by masturbation this is according to a study and these are all the news stories you can find on new telegraph on the nation newspaper Get me bandit boss Turji, defense minister orders troops. Governor's ranching best bet to end Heather Farmer crisis. Enugu Oke's 80,000 naira wage, VP Shatima Samoa, CHOGM trip aborted. 37 Lagos LCDA stay. You can find details of these stories on page 25, 4, and 26. Still on Ondo 2024, INEC to conduct mock accreditation November 6. Cleric urges residents to collect PVCs. Ayedatiwa pledges to prioritize healthcare and infrastructure. IMF projects reduction in Nigeria's debt to GDP ratio, global debt to ex exceed $100 trillion. The big story on the paper six NNPCL officials aboard chopper that crashed into ocean three bodies recovered and ape month pilot president orders military to join rescue team still on the paper government cost saving plan limits ministers convoy and security Humphrey Wosu, who conducted Abiola versus Tofa 1993 election, dies at 83. And that's all the news on the Nation newspaper. The Nigerian Tribune, we have the big story. It says investigation begins as oil workers die in helicopter crash. Three bodies recovered, five still missing. Crash chopper was heading to our facility. This is coming from NNPCL. How we activate a rescue coordination activities coming from Neymar and pilot revealed as NAAPE vice president. You can find more details on page three. From the top, we have residents trapped, others relocate as float ravages organ communities. Army arrest IPOP founder in Imo Commander, 10 others in Abia State. On cost of governance, Dinibu limits ministers convoy to three. From the down part of the paper, or from the middle, we have federal government flags off construction of 1068 kilometers Sokoto Badagri Highway. You can find more details on page three of the Nigerian Tribune. Humphrey Wotsu, ex next chairman, dies, and Peter Obi Mons. Mba approves 80,000 naira minimum wage for Enugu workers, and we have Nigeria 12 others join Briggs. PTD Nupeng threatened strike over seizure of loaded trucks by IGP's team. Neglect of livestock for foreign dairy, a mistake. This is coming from the President Tinivo. Nigeria's public debt soars by 10.35%, reaching to 134.3 trillion naira. You can find more details on page six of Nigerian Tribune. And the last story here says senators in heated argument over funding for regional commissions as Senate passes bills for three regional commissions. You can find more details on page 12. All right. Before we move further to other papers, we would like to take a short break now. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Make your everyday informative, make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zuma Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m.
Welcome back. Thank you for not going anywhere. If you're just joining us, this is the dailies here on Echo Television International, and I still have Loyster IQ with me. I'm here. Yes, thank you, Lois. Now, moving on to the next paper, which will be the Punch newspaper. The big story, cabinet reshuffle. Presidency defends Tinibu as federal government slashes ministers' vehicles and aid. The writer says federal government differs as Clark orders alleged lopsidedness. Tinibu seeks Senate confirmation. Senate okays 15% state funding for regional development commissions. Broken aircraft windscreen aboard Shetima Samoa trip. You can find details on page two. Naira devaluation pushes <coughs> federal government states debt to 134 trillion naira. Tropical storm leaves 24 dead in Philippines flooding, and we have a cross section of pictures where we can see the situation currently in the Philippines. At the downside of the paper, military NEMA comb sea for crashed helicopters passengers. Police hunt gunmen as nine killed in fresh Anambra attack. Pensioners threaten protests as federal government four states owe 193 billion naira. You can find details on page 19, and that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. Nigerian News Direct newspaper. The big story is on cost of governance. We have Tinibu slashes ministers heads of head of agencies convoy to three vehicles. The writer says gives not to attachment of five security personnel to each minister directs NSA to coordinate immediate reduction of ministers' vehicle security personnel. You can find more details on page 4. From the top, we have First Bank to transition to cloud-based system. Rep Speaker Wife donates 140 million naira to Jigawa victims' explosion. You can find more details if you're so interested on page 4 of Nigerian News Direct newspaper. An heirs insurance group headlines international conference for women in insurance insurance as lead sponsor we will not repeat mistakes of the past to neglect livestock farming this is coming from tinibu you can find more details on page four old narrow notes remain legal tender not expiring in december the central bank of nigeria says and you can find more details on page four the last story here says our personnel on board crashed helicopter this is coming from the nmpc I'll be taking the Disney newspaper. The first story is from CBN. No retirement date for old narrow banknotes remain legal tender indefinitely. Wale Adun is saying World Bank support critical for empowering Nigerian women-led businesses. Shatima cancels CHOGM trip as plane's windshield is damaged at JFK Airport in New York. The big story, Lopoberi is saying federal government targets doubling of 37 billion um, barrels of reserves with improved exploration. The writer says all eight persons on board helicopter and route NNPC oil facility dead. Tenable urges military to join search rescue mission. NSIB launches investigation as Minister Mons. You can find details of this story on page 5. Mba approves 80,000 naira minimum wage for Enugu workers and effective October 2024. So Enugu workers will begin to see a minimum wage of 80,000 naira this month of October. You can find details on page 35. And we have a picture with the caption, Exciting Youth with Glow my g you can find this story on page eight and that's all the news on this day newspaper on nature news newspaper from the top we have cso's demand climate justice finance commitment at cop 29 the big story here says tinibu rejects cabinet names may have pioneer minister of livestock development you can find more details on page three sacks five ministers appoints seven new ministers reassigns 10 to 10 new portfolios we have federal government unveils initiatives to restore dams in nigeria and fao unicef partner agri ministry on food security analysis in nigeria you can find more details on page five from the down part of the newspaper we have equity state government initiatives measures to tackle flood disasters and fact check is styrofoam damaging your health this is the question for people that are using uh, 
styrofoam right yeah so yeah you can assess that and probably maybe give feedback to nature newspaper i mm -hmm. think it will come very handy yes. to them and on climate climate ngo decries habitat laws in africa hubs and ecosystem protection you can find more details on page five the last story says Shofile, an idiot after three root boogie fires. You can find more details if you're so interested on page 20 of Nature Newspaper. And that's all the news stories you can find on this particular newspaper. On Punch Pod Extra, the big story Patroids collide. In the battle, Anna Owuniyi, Dennis as Leicester, host Forest as King Power Stadium. You can find details on page 7. Libya versus Nigeria, CAF keeps parties in suspense. Chelsea contact Gaddafi for Uche. And on CAF Women Champions League, Edo Queens captain Osakpolo targets trophy. On Wafu B on the 20, we have our flying eagles etch elephants into semis. Hands confirm Joshua will fight Fury or the boys next. Gusau Pinnick hailed Deco's appointment as Jala kicks. On an FFP, City may escape expulsion or relegation. Alexander Arnold unfazed by Liverpool doubters and tennis star makes awkward wardrobe blunder. You can find details on page 8. Unsigned fighter disrupts UFC 308 press conference. Newer brutally told to retire. Saka doubtful for a Liverpool clash. You can find details of this story on page 6. And that's all the news on Point Sports Extra. Coming to the Business Day newspaper, from the top we have IMF OG structural reforms to improve Nigeria's growth outlook and the Minister of Finance says investors relishing opportunity in Nigeria. The big story here, four ways FX starved Nigeria can boost oil output. We have still on the paper, yield hungry investors drive TB returns to five month high and triumph amidst turmoil, Bafi awards honors financial institutions defying economic odds. You can find more details on page 27 of Business Day newspaper. And the final story here says, five missing, three bodies recovered in an NMPC helicopter crash. You can find details on page 30 of Business Day newspaper. That's all the news stories that you can find, find here on this particular newspaper. On Sporting Sun newspaper, we have an interesting story here where we have an ex Arsenal star inviting Pogba to become a gunner. You can find details of this story at the back page Vinicius Jr. link to Pele. And we have Chelsea's new signing breaks Neymar's record. A Henacho Rick Sevilla exit. We got carried away. Kane reacts to Bayern UEFA Champions League defeat to Barca, where we can see that Barcelona didn't spare um, Bayern Munich. And it's hard to believe that Kane was on that team. You can find details on page three. Fodin describes Haaland as goal scoring freak. And who would disagree with that? You can find details on page two. Joshua will fight Fury or the boys next um, the statement from hen on yedika faces three match ban after uefa champions league red card the big story on the paper 2024 calf award list boniface loses out as luke mantras aircon make final shortlist wobbly jasso for goalie of the year and also at the side of the paper we can see the full list of nominees for 2024 calf award list and that's all on Sporting Sun and also how far we can go on the dailies today. Thank you for staying with us. It is Friday and we hope that you have a beautiful weekend. Lois, thank you for doing the show with thank me today. You for having me and also you can have a beautiful weekend as I will definitely do. Yes, and to our viewer out there, thank you for dropping your comments. Thank you for being a part of the dailies. Till we come your way next week, do have a great day. Goodbye.